Hello, good day, and welcome back. Um, if you're like me, you've been enjoying the holiday season, and so one reason why there have been few videos, um, enjoying it with friends and family, and I hope you're doing the same in whichever way or wherever you celebrate. But all right, um, so let's jump in. So <clears throat> first thing um, you might notice if you um, you try to go back and look at the videos on the you, in the channel, YouTube, on YouTube, I've been renaming them. And sorry if this causes confusion and there might be a little bit more renaming to come, but I've been looking at other people who do series and how they name their videos and the way I was doing it just wasn't maintainable. <laughs> it was just too much work for me. And so I decided to stick with the chapters, which so we had chapter one is introduction, chapter two was setup, chapter three was HTML, Chapter four is CSS, which is what we're on. Chapter five is, you know, Java and blah, 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 and so on. So that still remained. But within each chapter, I had sections. So section one was, so chapter three, section one was basic HTML. Chapter three, section two was intermediate. Chapter three, sec, um, sec, chapter three section three was advanced. And I wanted to keep the, you know, three section within each chapter because I figured there would be a basic, intermediate, advanced within each chapter. But I don't think that's going to always pan out, um, especially here in CSS, for example. Um, I decided to just do enough each CSS and then tell you, so, okay, um, you know what? You really don't need to learn a whole lot because you can use libraries. And the same thing when I ended, actually, when the last video in Chapter 3, Section 3, which is HTML, advanced, the last video there, I said, oh, the next video was going to be showing you how to use... Um, you know, frameworks to do much nicer forms. And I even said in the intermediate section of chapter three, section two, which is intermediate HTML, that I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on layout when we talk about this and how you can use them for layout because you can use frameworks. Well, the same thing with CSS. I also mentioned, I already mentioned that for CSS, you don't really need to know a whole lot. You need to know the basic, like how we did it, right? We defined, we used the ID and we said, this is how you can identify a element. And, uh, or tag, whatever, you know, and, um, you know, you can identify an element with, a, with an ID and then you can apply some style into it, or you can use a, define a class and use that class on multiple things. And I demonstrated that. So what is this video about? This is going to be the last video in CSS. And I'm going to show you what I promised at the end of chapter three, section three, which I did not do. So now I'm going to show you here, which is by how to use frameworks to help you make good looking um, pages. So again, I'm not gonna go in depth of it because everything can just go on and on and on. I just need to get enough to get started and feel comfortable. And so what I hope to demonstrate in this video is that using a simple form, you're gonna see how the input elements of the button is gonna look very, very different with these two frameworks I'm gonna use. And that should convince you that you really don't need to spend a whole lot of time learning CSS because you can just use a framework that is going to give you all that styling that you need. And trust me, everything that you're going to see um, in terms of what the forms look like and so on, you can do with CSS. It's just why do it unless you need to, you know, you work for a company and you're going to be their style person. And, stuff. and even companies are using like Bootstrap Library and Material and other UI framework because they don't want to spend their time doing that. So without further ado, let me just jump right into it. So this is where we left out the last time. And what we did was externalized our CSS. And so what I want to do is I'm going to create a new section here. And I've already committed my changes. So, um, you know, uh, I commit whatever we did before. I said, I want to create a new branch. I'm going to call this chapter 04, section 03. I said, okay. And in this, for this section, I don't need an external style sheet for what I'm doing. Um, for the HTML here, I'm going to delete this essentially. I'm going to delete all of this and I'm going to copy some code that I have here. And so again, I'm going to start with a basic form and I'm going to explain it. And so there's some extra fluff here that I, I don't need, but uh, so let me take that out so it doesn't confuse you. And so you know the rest of it, right? This HTML, the doc type is meta information, but HTML, attribute lang English, whatever. Um, let's beautify this a little bit. And so I have my title and I have style, which we, we know from before, right? I have this pong. So since you see pong, since we call it CSS already, pong means that's how it's going to be the ID. 
So there we go. It's going to apply to this div. If I add a dot, a dot, it would mean it's a class. Okay, we did already in the previous video. Okay, so um, this is going to apply to some elements with this ID order, and it says set the width to 100, and then anything that's any text that's in it, it should be aligned center. No, there's another style here that says this applies to something that's inner, and we want it to be inline block, and we describe the whole how you can do display inline block and so on. We talk about the display attribute, and then the width of it, and then so this is going to fix the width of this inner thing, and then we just make a solid border. And so we have now you see a div here that's outer um, that's going to be applied, and then this inner div, and then we have a form within this inner div. And so let's save this and refresh over here and see what we have. And there we have. We have this um, inner div with a form inside of it, and it's centered inside of the outer div that's 100% width, right? And so you see, I got my form centered. Okay, good. So that's a basic form. Look, take note of what the controls look like, right? The input control and the submit button. Again, depending if you're running on Mac or Windows or Linux, it might look a very diff little bit different, but this is a basic form. So let's do just that. Let's commit our changes and call it basic form. So if we're going to delete that, we're going to just file a save. And so we're going to commit and we're going to call it basic HTML form. Okay. Now let's now introduce a bootstrap library and a form that we would create using the bootstrap library. So I'm going to play that. I'm going to say all and I'm going to say beautify. Now here for the bootstrap library, you see some of the same thing at the top. Um, there's this meta information here and this is just information for your browser telling us about, you know, devices and so on and some other things. But ignore other stuff. You're going to just be able to copy that and I'll show you copy it. And then we have our title. Then we have Bootstrap here, and we have this link. And notice this is including a, a style sheet, just like we had before. And we had that external style sheet. Now my screen didn't refresh here, so that's why you're seeing, um, you're still seeing that there. Anyway, that's gone, now I should refresh. So there's a CSS file that I'm fetching from a website. Now your CSS file can be local or it can be remote. For development, you might want to try doing this for a little bit, but then really for when you actually develop your application, you're going to download the files and store it locally. So I could create a directory here called CSS or, or something, download this file and just put it in there. And in that case, instead of doing, I'll just take off this path, this whole thing, and let's say put it in a CSS directory that's local here, it would be this. Just as when I had the file next to index.html, it was just the file name, but if I put it in a directory, then I'll put the directory, right? So you could, we've done that already with images also. Ignore the attributes, um, the cross origin and integrity. That's we don't need to worry about that. There's some comments here. Ignore that. Um, you'll see where I got that from. But again, stuff you can ignore. The important thing is um, this external style sheet that I'm bringing in from the Bootstrap library. And here I brought in some more CSS from the Bootstrap library team. I brought in another library called jQuery. All these things. Again, these are just external script now. So these are scripts that are external, and I'm fetching them, and there's a style sheet, and there's another script. You don't have to worry about those. Those are boilerplate. You, once you put them there, you don't have to change it. The important thing is how I use it. And so I have a div. I remember in my example before, I had a div called outer. Well, I replaced that with container fluid, a class instead of ID, because that's what Bootstrap gave me. Bootstrap also gave me a class called row, and I use that to say, I want to define a row, and for each row, there are 12, you can think of a row as being split into 12 column or 12 cells, and I want to use all 12 of those um, cells, which is basically the entire row. So um, in Bootstrap, you can subdivide your screen by creating a number of rows, and within each row, you can get, you'd get 12 columns, and then you could say how many of those columns you want to use, and then you could keep nesting this pretty much for as much as you like. And so I can say, um, if I wanted to do a split screen with, you know, let's say six even, um, you know, divided evenly, I could say I want a row, I could do six columns, six columns, and then I could further divide each one of those six columns into, I'd say, another row, which also give me 12 
columns and I could reuse those, right? So you can keep redoing this and we'll probably do a simple example of that. But right now, the important thing is I want to just show you how here is how my form has changed, right? My form changed um, simply by using this container row, say using 12 column and I have a form and you know, yes, you have to use this form group for for bootstrap, but that doesn't matter. Notice how my what my button look like, right? And you can even do stuff like btn primary, if I remember correctly. And there's a, and so I add this class btn primary, and look at it. Oh, my button has changed. You have nothing like that in you know basic HTML. So again, using a library, and then you can do things like warn, I believe. Right, um, or warning, maybe it's warning. Between the two libraries, they use different thing. Um, yep, warning, right? Um, and danger, right? And so, as you can see, I can change, and there's more. I mean, there, there are many more things I, I can do here. I can do things like, actually, I'm not gonna do it because I wanna come continue and move on and, and finish it up. So. Here's this is an example of, well, notice how my input have rounded corners, um, the radius. So you can do that sort of thing in HTML, the buttons, you know, that you see how they're rounded. So you can do that all with CSS. And so you get it for free when you use a library. Now, where did I get it from? Okay, you go to get bootstrap.com. Yeah, let me expand this a little bit. And here they give you, you can download the library, like I was saying before, and use it, you know, locally. Or you could use always load. So if you download the library, um, they give you a number of example documents that you can get started with. And towards the bottom here, they actually have um, a sample document. And so, dum, 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 dum. where is that sample document? Um, hmm, okay, basic example. Is that, yeah, there it is, right? And so you could copy this. And just paste it and you see this exactly what I had. And you could see this is all the script stuff that I um, think it referenced jQuery library. And this is if you download it, download it, it would access the bootstrap.min and the CSS file locally, right? But I didn't download it. I, I referenced mine from another somewhere else, right? So to go with the approach that I have, um, you could just pause and record where I downloaded these, where I reference these from, or you can just download it um, and use it. Now, um, one of the things I should probably do is start making the code available as you know, we get more, write more and more code so you don't have to rewrite all this stuff. I should probably make um, the code available so that you can just um, you know, access the code. Um, and anyway, that's fine, we'll, I'll sort that out. So, okay, so that's how you get, oh, here's an example where you can actually copy um, the code, right, using the CDN, right, Content Distribution Network. Okay, so uh, you have no need to really try and copy it from my code. So here you go. Just copy and paste this in, um, and you're good. So this is all you learn to the JavaScript library. This is all you learn to the, um, you know, the team and this is how you learn to the CSS and so you just copy each one of those lines in place where it says it needs a JavaScript library, copy the one here. Where it says it need the, where you can put the team, well you can put the team in here too. And then for the CSS here, so this line you replace that line here. So you force you to copy all this and replace this line with this line. Okay? And then this is optional anyway, so ignore team. Then you'd copy this line and replace it and put it here. If you haven't downloaded it. Okay, so okay. Now I mentioned all that stuff, but you still need to understand the grid system here in CS um, for Bootstrap. So components, let me see if we're just gonna talk about a grid system. Um, grid system, here you go. And so it tells you that everything is laid out as um, 12 columns and you know, for how you use rows and it must always add up. And 
the column MD and SM that you see me using, medium, it says up to which device does this take effect? So one of the things the library give you is um, mobile force, which means you divide, design your page and even when you resize it on really small devices, it still looks pretty good. And that's because they use something called media query. And basically, it's just a way for the browser to detect the size of the device, device screen size. And so when you specify your columns, when you say I have a row and I'm using extra small or small or medium or large, it would take effect uh, accordingly. So you always still have a number of 12 columns regardless of what size you're on, screen size. But you can say on a small, extra small screen, I want a row to, you know, like an input box to take up all 12 because I know the screen is really small. But on a medium device, I want the input box to take up three because I know it's much wider. So this is, for example, on a medium device, you're saying I want to use, uh, I want text to be in each one of these columns. And as you can see, this is 12. This it's always adds up to 12. MD4, 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 MD8, MD4, MD6, MD6, right? And see how it splits. And so this is how you'd use it. Class row, then within each, each row, you'd say how many columns you want to use, and you'd put the text within the nested um, div. And so you could wrap the whole thing in a container fluid. And then here you could see an example where you said, where it says, on a really small screen, I want this entire row to be used. That's why it has 12 on a really small screen. But on a medium sized screen, I want you to use 8 and 4. So looking at this, we can see that oh, this is 8 and 4 because this looks more like it's twice the size of this. So this is medium size. If I start squeezing this, all right, and let's get back to it. If I start squeezing, you're going to see that now it switches to on it's going to switch to extra small screen is just um, uh, is 12, right? And um, then, um, but because we didn't have a, a size device for small, the extra small kicked in, okay? And then notice here, you say on small screen, I want it to be six and six, and there's what you get. You get on small screen, this is split half and half, whereas here, you're saying, I want to take over the entire size of the screen. And here you say extra small, they would just use half, right? So you could see it, it changes depending on the size of the screen that you're on, right? And so that's how you do your layout. All right, so let's move on. I'm spending too much time on Bootstrap. So that's how to use the Bootstrap library. Go to, over to Bootstrap, get bootstrap.com, and then um, get it started. And then you can copy this and the example here. And then now you can just go over to, um, you know, the components and you could start using you know buttons and input groups it's going to tell you how to use input groups so here are different input groups just simply copy them paste them on your form see how they look and then just go from there so i'll copy this this for example i'm gonna come over here and i'm gonna paste it um below my in my form here just below this input group i'm gonna paste this one i'm gonna beautify again and so now i'm gonna save and then I go over here and I refresh, right? And now you see I have my name input and then this username one that I just pasted. Okay, that's as easy as it is to use this library. All right, so let's move on. So let's move on to my second library. And so I'm going to commit the changes here. I'm going to say using, form, um, using bootstrap library. Simple form using bootstrap library okay okay so that's done the next and final one library i want to show you is angular js and this one is probably a little bit weirder to to show you but i'm going to do it anyway and this is one of my favorite libraries to use so i'm going to copy all this and I'm paste over it and then i'm going to beautify it all right and so Again, this is all the same. Ignore this attribute for now. Let's, again, I just left those other stuff that was in from Bootstrap, but I really could take them out and it would still work the same. It actually really would. But that just helped with the media query and um, stuff. So anyway, uh, so I'm gonna leave it for now. AngularJS form, and then this is how I do an external link in again to the Angular Material CSS library. And 
I'll show you where to get this information, but the same as before when we linked to the Bootstrap CSS library. I didn't download it, so I'm linking externally. And then at the bottom here, I included some JavaScript library. And so, you know, this one is to the Angular, Mater Angular library itself. The Angular material depends on Angular and Angular Aria library and Angular Animate. So there's Angular Animate library, this is Angular Aria library, and there's Angular Material, the thing that we actually want to use. But because Angular Material depends on these three, we have to include them first. Now when you use AngularJS, and this is, we haven't co covered JavaScript yet, but this is how you put a piece of JavaScript code, just like how when we did style, you could embed the style in the HTML or make it external. So this is external JavaScript, this is embedded, um, internal to the, um, this external in the, in the file, and this is here internal to your HTML. Once you include the AngularJS um, library, you get this object, Angular. And we haven't done JavaScript, so you gotta just bear with me. And so I could create something called a module. So I say Angular, um, Angular module, call it demo application, and then it depends, and this we list our dependency in this array. Again, we haven't covered that. And so it depends on this um, module called ng material. Ng material is defined by diff library. So this is that we're saying that oh hey, I depend on my demo module depend on demo app module depend on this library again don't think too much about the angular stuff we haven't learned it and then this application i have defined or this module this angular module i've defined i'm saying here this attribute i'm saying it use it's going to be control um, i want to define that my html and all nested tag is going to be controlled by this module that i just created in angular at, at the bottom here okay i know it's it's kind of hard but a lot going on. But just trust me, that's boilerplate and I, I just have to do that. Once I've done that stuff, and you, we can just copy it. Now I'm going to say I actually want to use, you know, the Angular Material stuff. In Bootstrap, when we had a div, we had container fluid. Here, we're saying we have a column. Slightly different, right? And then we have a form, and, you know, our form, we have MD input container. Uh, for Bootstrap, it was f input group. Here, they, you know, we're going to call it input container. And then label, same thing, label, input, we have an input, and then we have MD button. Same thing, right? It's a little bit less code than here for material than Bootstrap. You know, probably seem a little bit other things more here for Angular than for Bootstrap. But let's just save it, and let's just see what we get. So we refresh, and we get, again, different looking buttons, and look at our input. Input with, you know, the animation, hence why material depends on the animation library, right? Look at the animation, look at the effects that we get. So it's all up to you. Do you want this type of look and feel or you want the bootstrap look and feel? So whichever library you think you're, gonna, you're attracted to, spend some time investing in it. If you don't like any of them, do basic HTML forms, you're going to be totally fine. And then later on, you can think. The only reason I like the libraries is because it starts giving you a form and pages that look really good. It allows you to do the layout and so on very easily. And so you get a good looking application with little work. And you get to just focus on what you need your application to do. Okay? So there are many other things that I have not shown you here. I just want to show you how these libraries allow. Oh, so material. So we go to material.angularjs.org. And when you're there, you say, get in started. Now you can do demo actually, and see the different controls that they have, right? Um, you know, autocomplete, button sheets, buttons, all the different types of buttons they have, primary, disabled, cards, and all these other things, right? Um, check boxes, chips, and so on. But anyway, I get in ahead of myself. Those are the demo, how you get started. You get in started, and then you can look at this example page that they have here. And you can literally just copy this example and you see it says ng blank app. And here is that code for, uh, where is the code for ng blank app? Oh, they have it externally. Oh, no, there it is. Exactly what I have, ng module blank app depend on ng. So you just copy this entire page, this page, and paste that and you get started, you can get started. And all the other stuff you can do then is just go and grab, um, some demo um, code, you know, you want to use a date picker, go grab this demo code by coming here, 
and then click here view source and they show you how to do different date pickers or if you want to do an input or a list you want to do input come here grab the source take it and paste it in your code right so hopefully I, it wasn't too overwhelming but I imagine it might be a little bit since we haven't done JavaScript and the, the, the framework we're gonna use I'm gonna use is angular material so for people who want to use Angular Material, don't worry, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that from scratch. Um, for Bootstrap, it's a little bit, probably a little bit easier to use. Um, and so some people who want to go that road can go that road. There are other reasons that I'm using AngularJS. AngularJS is really meant for writing a full application. And Bootstrap is just mostly for your UI and stuff. Whereas AngularJS allows you to handle backend stuff, which we're going to talk about. We haven't done, which is how to handle those form submission that I've been hinting at. When you fill out, you create your form, you fill it out, and somebody ready to submit some information. How do you take care of that information? Angular is going to help you handle that sort of thing. All right. So I think this video is probably past the 15 minutes mark. I haven't been timing it. So I'm going to end it here. And hopefully this wasn't too overwhelming. I'm going to save, commit my changes here. And so this is using Angular um, JS material. All right. Um, next section, we're going to actually jump into JavaScript. Okay. All right. Take care and see you later. Bye.